The location is London, precisely Canary Wharf, where most big banks are headquartered. And we are inside Pierpont, an investment bank from the series Industries, and specifically in the ladies' toilets, which is unusual, and we're not here to purr. We're here to answer a very important question. Is Pierpoint likely to collapse? Is this a great short opportunity? And I would like to thank ED419 for asking the question. One of the dressed like that is in our story, but those girls are junior staff at the investment bank, and one of them has some important news. I outlined this hypothesis. Which we're gonna to try to understand. Pierpoint Asset Management might have taken an outsized prop bet as part of our ESG pivot, funded by debt that is about to reach maturity. It's a a balance sheet motherload. So let's break it down because this is not clear. I think this is way above our pay grades. Pierpoint's asset management is actually not Pierpoint. And if they have taken a, a big bet which has gone wrong, it doesn't necessarily mean that Pierpoint has to suffer because that's what we're talking about. What we want to figure out is first, what is she actually saying? Secondly, what are the risks? And thirdly, what situation is Pierpoint in? Is it going to collapse? Is it a short opportunity? And there's also a legal question about, you know, is this all legal? What about Arthur here? Is she allowed to hide? But let's take it one by one. So to understand, we need to go back because the writers had to include that scene in the toilet because they needed Harper to listen to it for the rest of the script. And they didn't want to bore us with a repeat of what has been said. So she just condensed this in one sentence, but really we can't make sense of it. And that's because she had explained it to her boss before. So we're going to refer to that. Obviously, there's a trend of IPOs being pulled and ESG is experiencing a downturn. Thank you for highlighting that for me. We start with something that's not impressing anyone. It's kind of industry specific, but you could say, okay, that's the macro environment we're in. It's not good. Pierpoint issued like a fuck ton of senior secured debt around five years ago, and it's about to reach maturity. And there's literally no bid for it anywhere. So Pierpoint has issued senior debt. And there's no bid for it, which means that people want to buy the debt before it expires. So we're going to translate it into, there's a debt that they have issued that's going to expire. As they are to issue new bonds, uh, no one wants to buy it. So this, this capital raising strategy, coincidentally, but also perhaps... So she calls it capital raising strategy, but this is not capital, right? Capital is equity. This is debt. Let's not worry about it. She's also a junior analyst. She's a bit confused. Dangerously lines up with the timing of our own ESG pivot. ESG it stands for environmental, social and government. Also, you can call it impact investing and stuff like that. Now, with the whole bank's pivot to ESG, this is not what I would call a pivot. Their core activity is still banking. Maybe they shift their customer base to ESG players. Look, I could I could probably get in a lot of trouble for this, you know, with like the Chinese walls. There are Chinese walls because the market side, we also should not be communicating with the investment banking side. My friend Magdalena in banking said that every IPO roadshow that they've done over the past three months has gone badly. Here's more equity capital markets rather than banking. And obviously people who have secret discussion with companies that want to go public shouldn't be transmitting this information to the people who will be trading. No company coming to market will want Pierpoint to be its book runner. And the equity within these prospective companies is close to zero by now. All those companies that were prospective IPO, they're going to zero, to make it simple. And the third information is that Pierpoint took equity stakes to facilitate these deals. So they've invested their own money. Is it possible that these prop bets are all going to zero? So now we have a clear picture of what she's actually saying. We can think of what are the risks. So the fact that the bank may not be able to fund its debt, I would put it in the liquidity risk bucket. Then the fact that IPOs are going badly, it's a business risk. If Pierpoint is not going to be able to manage more IPOs, they're going to take less fees. And if people typically don't want to deal too much with Pierpoint, it's bad for the business. And the third is they've invested into something that goes to zero. One layer of risk is profitability. It's a p &L risk, okay, they took an investment, it went badly. But if it's a bank, there's a more important risk, and I think that's really what we're touching here. If they have enough bad bets, this could affect their equity, and the bank has to maintain 
an equity capital ratio or the regulators will intervene. So this is the risk situation. Now, what does that really mean for Pinion Point as a bank? And is it going to collapse? And I'm sure that as the writers were putting together season four, they had credit risk in mind, which collapsed in April 2023. The regulator intervened, did not let it collapse and organized a takeover by a rival bank, UBS. This could be the scenario for Pierpoint. And in order to figure out if we're in this situation, I'm also going to use the help of someone that I interviewed. He's not just a banking specialist. He was actually at Credit Suisse and helped create some of the instruments that led to the collapse of the company, such as the 81 bonds or COCOs. And there's a video about them here. But that's going to be for the next video. So please subscribe to get notified. For now, 8419, thank you very much for asking this question. It's actually really tricky. I realize there's so much going into it. And I would recommend that if you want to understand more about banking, there's this video based on billions. And I've got also more trades from industry explained here. Please keep the request coming. I have put together this course on alternative investment with the same spirit that I'm doing here, which is finding examples and analyzing through critical thinking. So we might also consider that. And uh, I see you next time.